Hello everyone, Dave McCulloch, the Cannabis Fisherman, back with you. Uh, if you saw my first video uh, where I explained what that means, the Cannabis Fisherman, I won't go into too much detail right now, except to say that uh, I like to fish and I like cannabis. I work in the legal cannabis industry out here in California. I've done so for about 13 years. And these are not instructional videos about cannabis. And they're not videos about smoking cannabis. You won't see me doing bong hits and stuff like that, so that you don't have to worry about your kids seeing the videos. I'm just a person that will occasionally talk about cannabis and fishing at the same time because they're starting to tie in. I saw a lure the other day. I didn't buy it. I wish I did. I talked about it in my first video. The color on the lure was California 420. And I thought, well, that was pretty funny. And I expect that some lure companies, not all for sure, but some lure companies will continue that trend as cannabis gets more legal, accepted, and, and uh, popular across the United States. But anyway, that's not the purpose of this video, or any of my videos. It's not really about cannabis. Although, just responsible use, if you're out there on the water, you know, you shouldn't be uh, smoking and driving your boat, or, you know, like drinking and driving, they'll give you a DUI. And if you get caught with cannabis in a state park or uh, a federal park, you're going to have some serious problems. Or get caught anywhere, even on private property or private lake, in a state where cannabis is not allowed, you got problems. Anyway, this, the point of this video today is about uh, my Mystery Tackle Box Elite. My July box just came today. Uh, it actually came in a big bag. And the reason for that is, uh, I'm assuming, this first time it came in a bag is because I ordered some other stuff with it. I guess that, you know, they couldn't fit in the box like a t-shirt. Uh, I ordered a bunch of add-ons. They have add-ons. If you guys aren't familiar with Mystery Tackle Box, I'm going to open this up in a minute and we'll go through it. But it's a monthly subscription that you can get. And uh, it really is a mystery. You don't know what you're getting each month. And they have different levels. You know, you can get uh, uh, different levels and different types of, of uh, species boxes. Like, I'm a bass fisherman, so when I started out with Mystery Tackle Box, I got the the, the bass box and I got the pro version which is uh, they have different levels at different prices the pro version was like 25 or 26 dollars a month and you got about 40 dollars worth of baits well uh, a few months ago they they added another box and they called it the bass elite box so I, I opted for the elite box which is uh, 39.99 a month but you're supposed to get like 50 or 60 dollars worth of baits and they typically just uh, what I've been getting in the past is mostly high-end baits baits that a lot of fishermen won't go out and spend you know 15 or 20 dollars for one bait i personally don't mind that but i really like the idea because i'm building my tackle back up uh, i live in california I live in fairfield california not far from lake barry yes that's that's where I, I fish a lot and you know last october we had big fires in california i was living in santa rosa at the time i'd lived in santa rosa for about 40 years and i lived in the same house for like 19 years and uh, we lived in the coffee park area and at three o'clock in the morning october 9th i got woke up by my fire alarm my house was on fire and Completely on fire, surrounded by fire. I had to run through flames to get out, blah, blah, blah. Lost everything. Lost my belly boat. I lost my fishing poles. I mean, thousands of dollars worth of, worth of fishing gear. Stuff I collected all my life. You know, I'm 56 years old. I've been fishing since I was five years old. So this, I found out about this right after, or just before the fires, actually. Uh, the fire was October 9th, which was a Monday. And the Friday before, which would have been, what, the 6th, I actually got my very first uh, Mystery Tackle Box Pro version. And I was really, really excited to get it. I got it on Friday, and I had pulled all my gear out. I was going fishing that weekend. I pulled the belly boat out. I got everything going. I was going to go fishing Monday. And, uh, you know, the fire came, and uh, my plans got put on hold. I had called Mystery Tackle Box. You know, I just got that a couple days before the fire. And I called Mystery Tackle Box. I was really excited to get my very first box. Unfortunately, I lost it in the fire. And I asked them, could you, could you find it in your heart to send me another one, please? And, and if not, I understand. You know, I'll, I'll just wait for the next month's box. They responded, they were very, very kind. They responded, they sent me another box. And the only thing I couldn't get was, um, because it was my first box, I put in a code free lure that I saw in the ad that said, they, they gave me an extra free lure for being a first time subscriber and a $10 discount. And the free lure was a color changing lure that changed colors as the, the lure went through different water temperatures. Like if you went through the water column and you went through the thermal client or just any, any variation in temperature, the lure would change colors. But they didn't have any more when they sent me the new box to, to send me that. So they said, listen, we're sorry we're out of this exclusive lure. We can't send it to you. But what we will do is give you $20 credit off your next box. So my first box, I got a $10 discount. And then they replaced it when it burned up in the fire. Very nice. And uh, when they couldn't give me the, the free lure that I had originally gotten, they gave me a $20 credit. So my next box was only like $6. So... It was wonderful. So anyway, let's get this going. Um, so I ordered a bunch of stuff the other day. And that's what I think. Now, they did send me a Neko separately. I don't know why they didn't put this in the box. This could have fit in the box. 
And this is a, a Catchco Neko, it's a tiled Neko. And I bought, I needed a couple more Nekos, uh, face shields, you know. And this one wasn't $20 like they typically, most of them are on the, on the, the, in their catalog. It was on sale that day for $12. But for some reason, they sent it to me, uh, not in the box with everything else. They sent it separate, which is fine. But, so let's, let's open this up. I've got some scissors here. Let's find out what we got in here. The first thing is, yes, the first thing is the T-shirt. It looks like today I ordered, I ordered an MTV T-shirt. This one was also on sale. Again, I didn't want to pay, you know, nineteen or twenty dollars for a shirt. When I saw this was on sale, I think it was thirteen or fourteen dollars. I might have jumped on it because, you know, most of the shirts I buy, T-shirts I buy, unless it's something really exclusive, I buy them at Walmart or Target or someplace. I don't pay more than four or five bucks for a T-shirt, seven bucks top. You shouldn't have to. It's a T-shirt, right? Uh, even though I love Mastery Tackle Box. Uh, I didn't want to spend 20 bucks, but they do put them on sale, so I got it. Now, uh, this is just a packing slip, no big deal, we'll throw that over there. Let's pull the box out, see what we got in the box. Now, a couple other things I ordered uh, were um, some dip and glow markers. Let me open this up real quick, and these are scented markers, I think they said they had garlic scent. And I got these for dyeing uh, lures or plastics, like I want to change the tip of the plastic to, a, to yellow or red. You know, if I want to color the plastic, I can do that. And it's a garlic scent. And then the only other color they had available uh, for a pen was yellow and orange. Or chartreuse and orange, however you want to call it. I like the yellow. I like the red. Those, those are key colors. I'll try the orange too. But uh, I thought these might be better for, for uh, adding color to your base rather than the dipping ones because they're rather messy and stuff. I like the dipping ones. They work great. Nothing wrong with them. But, you know, on the boat and on the water and on the go, I'm not worried. You know, I'm worried about spilling a bottle of that dip and glow all over the bottom of my boat or all over my clothes or something like that. So let's put those aside and uh, let's see. Let's get something to open this box with right here. I should have grabbed my knife. I'm not as prepared as I should have been. I thought I had it in my pocket and I don't. All right, there we go. So let's see what's in here. First thing I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll grab the, the Dibbles bait card. And uh, you always get a, a Dibbles card. And, and if you open this up, it talks about, uh, it has little stories and stuff like that. It, it's got fishing techniques. You might learn something, or it might be something you already know. But oftentimes they talk about how to fish the baits that they put in the box. And that's the really cool thing about this box is it's a seasonal box. So they send you lures. And it doesn't matter what species of fish you're fishing for. The lures they send you are lures that should, you should be able to use on your waters that month. So I'm really excited to see what's inside here. But on the back, uh, the card, they always have the what's inside the box. And uh, sometimes they have mystery tackle box exclusives. Lures are exclusive just to mystery tackle box. Oh, so let's see what we got here. One thing we've got in here is we've got a whopper plopper. Let's find that. Now, I've bought some whopper ploppers. I've had, this is my new favorite topwater lure, actually, is the whopper plopper. I've always been a huge fan of topwater, buzz baits, uh, frogs, stuff like that. When I found out about this whopper plopper, I went out and I bought a couple of them. And I've been killing it with them on top water. I mean, that one's just really exciting to throw because they move a lot of water and they make a lot of noise. So I bought a bunch of them in different sizes. They come in several sizes. This size here is the 110 millimeter. This is the one I have the least of. I've got several of the 130 millimeter, a little bit bigger sizes. And I've got several of the, the 90 millimeter, which is a bit smaller. Now, they are coming out with, I don't think it's not released yet, but I just, I saw a video on YouTube. They're coming out with a 75 centimeter size. So even smaller than the 90, uh, which I think would be really good for smallmouth. I think the 90 is good for smallmouth. And you'll get some smallmouth on the 110, but uh, typically probably the bigger ones, which is fine. Catch less, less fish, but bigger ones. And then on the 130, you probably wouldn't get nearly as many. You'd probably get the bigger of the smallmouth. But in this particular color, too, yeah, this color is Phantom Shad. Now, I have a 90 millimeter in Phantom Shad, so now I've also got the 110 millimeter. So, and these are uh, $16, so 12, 14 or $16, I forget, depending on where you buy them, retail. So that's pretty good. A lot of guys don't want to spend that kind of money on a bait. All right, I'll, here's a sticker in here, and this is a Catch Co. sticker. Yeah, it, if you're my age, you know what this is a play of, right? When I was a kid, there was a toy that came out from Mattel, I think uh, around 67 or 68, called uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Google that and look at some of the old commercials or go to YouTube and look at the old Rock'em Sock'em Robot. I'll knock his block off. Anyway, that's what this is a play on. This is kind of cool. This is actually one of the coolest stickers I've gotten from uh, Mystery Tackle Box, except for the American flag sticker they sent last month, which was my favorite one. I, I did complain to them recently that I'm not a big sticker guy, 
uh, stickers don't excite me a lot, although I, I did complain that I had not yet gotten uh, a Mystery Tackle Box sticker. I've been a subscriber now for nine or ten months and have not gotten a Mystery Tackle Box sticker. And I find that kind of odd. I'd sure like to have one. All right, now let's see what else we got in here. The Booyah Hard Knocker. Let's see what we got here. Okay, here we go. This is the Booyah Hard Knocker. This is a rattle bait, or rattle trap type bait. Not rattle trap, that's a brand. But uh, it's a lipless crankbait. Let's see what it's got. Yes, it does have a lot of rattles in it. This looks like it's in some sort of a craw color. It is ghost green craw, it says. It's got uh, a little orange underneath the lip and some really nice red eyes. So this will go into my lipless crankbait uh, collection. And uh, I've gotten a couple other really good, uh, neat uh, lipless crankbaits from Mystery Tackle Box in the past. Not this one. This is, this is the first Booyah one that I have. I'm really excited about that. It looks good. I don't have that shape or that color. Now, the next thing we have is a Yamamoto Senko. I love Yamamoto Senkos. Uh, they're, they're one of the best Senkos on the market. So we've got the Gary Yamamoto. You know, Gary Yamamoto is one of uh, Roland Martin's sponsors. And that's where I really, when I first paid attention to Gary Yamamoto, I've been a fan of Roland Martin's for you know, decades. You know, I've been watching that guy on TV for, for years, 30 years or 40 years. And uh, this one here is a green pumpkin watermelon. This is perfect. Um, I'm going to the Delta. I've got a uh, tournament to fish on the Delta, the 21st of July here, 2018. I'll be taking this as part of my Furness gear uh, because that, that's definitely coming out. Those are typically $7.89 a pack, and this is a pack of 10. You know, Yamamoto Senkos will cost you a little more than the average Senko, but it's also one of the best built Senkos. I mean, there's some other good ones out there. And uh, I even use Yum and some of the other less expensive ones. Um, and they've got some, some, some cool colors. But Gary Yamamoto, boy, that guy knows what he's doing. So next thing I have is a Gamakatsu offset extra wide gap hook. Let's find out where those are. You generally get terminal tackle uh, if you've got something in the box that requires it. Like, we got the Senkos. So that's the thing about mystery tackle. Not only do they give you what you need seasonally, but they make sure that you got what you need to fish with what's in the box. They're not going to send you a plastic and assume you've got the hooks to go with it, although you probably do, but we can always use more hooks. So if they send you any kind of plastic like that, they're gonna send you terminal tackle with it. I've gotten Carolina stuff, Carolina rig uh, kits and all kinds of things like that in the past. You get jig heads and all kinds of stuff. So here we've got uh, three uh, off shank, offset shank worm, extra wide gap hooks. One, well, looks like there's uh, about five of them in here. So that's nice. And Gamagatsu, that's one of my favorite brands. I buy those anyway. So let's see what the next thing is in here. And it doesn't look, looking at this list, that this month there's anything exclusive to Mystery Tackle Box, but oftentimes the baits you get, you can't buy anywhere else. They're exclusive only through Mystery Tackle Box. Now sometimes the bait's available, but not in that color, or there's usually some sort of an option. And it's not, uh, this one here doesn't have any of those, and that's okay. So next we got uh, Yozuri 3DB Wake Bait for $9.99. So let's see, Yozuri. Oh wow, this looks really good. It's a wake bait. It's a floating wake bait. It dives to about uh, zero to half a foot, it says. Those are, so you know, those are, are uh, Japanese baits. That's, turn this up so you can see it. That's what it looks like. I love the color. Let's see if they have the color listed in English and not Japanese. Um, I do not see a color listed anywhere on the box, but it looks like it's some sort of a shad or... Um, yeah, some sort of a shad pattern, you know. So anyway, it looks really good. There's no rattles in it, but uh, you know, those Japanese baits are pretty expensive, so this is one of the things that you get in this uh, this Elite box. And I've gotten Yozuri's when I had the Pro box. I got some Yozuri lures in there, so even the Pro box has got the high-end high -end baits. I'm telling you, I've had uh, one other subscription to another, one of their competitors that had, had started not that long ago. It was called uh, Outsiders Box, Outsiders Tackle Box or something like that. And the reason I got that, I saw the ad on Facebook, and it was $1.99 for the first month, plus shipping, and the shipping was only 6 bucks. And you're supposed to get uh, about $30 worth of baits. The box would normally be $21, but that first time it was only $1.99 plus $6 shipping. So I thought for $7.99, if I'm supposed to get $30 worth of baits, that's a, that's a no-brainer, right? So I signed up for it, got the first box. Eh, it was okay. If it was only seven dollars. I was really, really happy. I didn't feel like there was really thirty dollars worth of baits in there. There was about twenty-five dollars worth of baits, which is still a good deal. Even if you were paying the twenty-one, you're getting four dollars extra. And you weren't paying shipping, but that's not enough to really keep you hooked. So I thought, well, I'll go. I'll go three months before I make a decision. And then the second month, I got it. It wasn't too bad, but they overprice a lot of their baits. 
they were putting prices on baits that you would never spend on that bait because that the stores don't charge that much. And I don't like this falsely inflated price nonsense that a lot of these guys do with sales and stuff. It's just a game they play. I don't play the darn game. So I gave them one more chance. And uh, the following month, the third month they sent to me, I was completely disappointed again. Um, they had a couple of good baits in it, but some of the prices they put on it uh, were just way out of line of what anybody would actually ever pay for those particular baits. And then one of the baits they sent me in the very last month, uh, one of the plastics they sent me was a little tiny crappie plastic. And I was ordered a bass box. If I'm getting a bass box, you're sending me a crappie plastic. And I know bass will hit them, and vice versa, crappie will hit bass plastics. But the size was, it you know, wasn't I'm not likely going to get you know, as many bass hits as I want. So I was a little disappointed in that, and so I canceled it. But I've been really happy with the mystery tackle box. So far this month, I'm real happy. Let's see what else we got in here. So we already had the Yozuri. All right, now we got a, a Dobbins D-Blade Beast Spinnerbait. A D-Blade Beast Spinnerbait. Dobbins, it says. I've never seen that brand. D-O-B-Y-N-S. And this one here has got a double willow leaf. I know some guys already got their box before me, got Colorado blades. I was hoping for a Colorado blade because I need a few more. I got a lot of willow leaves, but uh, no big deal. I've got Colorado, I'll pick them up. Because um, spinnerbaits aren't real expensive, so it's not a big deal. It was nice that they sent this in here. This looks like it's a bluegill color. Let's see what it says on the back. And yes, indeed, it says blue chartreuse white. Well, yeah. Oh, shad, shad LF. So they're calling it a shad. You can call that shad. You can call that bluegill. It'll, it'll work for both. Spinnerbaits, what do they really represent in the water? Uh, there's nothing in the water that looks like this. We just fool the fish when we use them. You know, we give fish way too much credit. They're not nearly as smart as we think they are. They have, don't have the part of the brain they need for reasoning. No frontal lobe. They don't got the side lobes that, that we use for analytical thinking. So when you're getting a strike from a fish, there's three types of strikes, right? You guys have probably heard this, but if not, I'll go through them real quick for you before you finish this box. Yeah. The three basic types you get when you're bass fishing, or fishing in general, but this, certainly for bass, this nice predator, is you get feeding strikes. When they're actively feeding, looking for food, and they're hungry, they'll bite, obviously. Uh, so there's the feeding strike, but then there's the reaction strike, and the reaction strike is different than the feeding strike. They're not hungry. They're just reacting to something that's irritating them, or pissing them off, or uh, it just causes a, a natural uh, reaction that they have to strike. Bass are predators. They're opportunists. So you, you've probably seen or you've caught yourself a bass and looked inside its mouth while you're taking the hook out and see there's another fish in there or a crawdad or, you know, whatever they swallowed, a baby duck, whatever it was. And they're still eating. Why are they doing it? It's not that they're gluttons or they're trying deliberately to overeat, although there's times of the year where they like, to, they like to fatten up, like in the fall before winter. But it's built into their DNA. You know, if, if you're throwing a bait that imitates an injur, injured bait fish, that fish may not be hungry. He may strike it on a reaction strike. Why? Because he sees something injured. And he knows instinctively that something that's injured is easier to catch, and he's supposed to go and get that. And so oftentimes, you won't get a feeding strike. You'll get a reaction strike or a reaction bite. So those are the first two, feeding strike, reaction strike. The third one is a territorial strike or a territorial bite, which you'll find comes, you know, for bass fishermen, primarily probably during the spawn, when you're, you're throwing your bait into their beds, and they're not in an eating mood. You know, they're in a breeding mood. They're trying to lay the eggs and protect the eggs. The females come in and lay the eggs, and they come off, and the males come in and they protect them and all that. Uh, you throw a bait in there while that male's on that bed, or even while the female's in there, they may even just want to pick it up and move it out of the way. They don't want it there. They may bite it because they're mad at it. They may just pick it up and try to move it, you know. It's a territorial strike. You're in their territory. They don't like that. They want that creature or whatever, that worm, or whatever you put in there, they want it out of there. And so they'll, they'll do something about it, and they don't have hands. They can't, they can't kick it with their foot and kick it in the ass and say, get out of my house. You're in my nursery, my baby's bedroom. They can't do that. So they'll pick it up with their mouth and move it, or they'll inhale it to eat it or whatever. But generally speaking, during the spawn, they're not really on a feeding thing. It's, you're getting territorial strikes or a reaction strike because you pissed them off. So getting back into this here, so that was the last one there was the spinner bait. And so now the next one we have is the Big O's Dream Changer Lures. The Eel Eliminator. It's a two E's Eliminator for five forty nine. So let's see. It's a plastic bait. Oh boy, I have not seen anything that looks anything like this. The Eel Eliminator. This really is a strange looking bait. Um, it's got a nice big body right here, and it just kind of kind of curves and loops around back there. Uh, that's not bad. I like that. 
And this color here is Eliminator Green Pumpkin. It's a six pack. Uh, and on the back of Big O's, I've never seen this brand before. There's nothing I like about Mystery Tackle Box. I get these brands that I hadn't seen. Uh, and on the back, this little story says, when he's not wrecking biggins on Falcon Lake or whooping ass at karate tournaments, Steve Big O Parks designs fishing lures, and after creating some of the hottest baits on the market for other companies, Big O started Game Changer Lures to bring the next wave of innovation to the fishing industry. Well, I can tell you what. I actually kind of like this. I see a lot of different ways I could use this. This would be a good bait uh, to be a, a trailer on this spinner bait if I want to put a trailer on it or on a chatter bait or a jig or a swim jig. Or, um, I could probably use it like a swim bait. I could put it on this extra wide gap hook. I could throw this just as a, a weight, weightless swim bait. That would be a great way to, to use this thing. I could put it on a drop shot, uh, Texas rig. There's a lot of ways you can use it. Again, it's a, it's a brand I hadn't seen, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I like brands I have not seen. Now, there's one more item in here. There's two more items. There's one more lure. Uh, the Mustad Bucktail Jig, $3.49. I don't know how much you guys use bucktail jigs. Boy, they definitely have their place. I'll tell you what, you know, they really come in handy is on uh, smallmouth. You can catch, you can catch a lot of species on them. Bass will hit them. You know, the black bass will hit them. You know, the largemouth mouth will spot them. But the, the smallies, these are really good on smallies. Now this one's got two eyelets on it, it looks like. There's an eyelet in the front like normal, but there's an eyelet on the top, just in case you just want to jig it straight up and down or something like that. So I really like that. Uh, it's just white with uh, some black buck hair, it looks like. And I don't have, I've got a few bucktail jigs. I, I've probably got three or four of them. Um, so this will definitely go into the arsenal, and I'll try this next time I'm going to put Berryessa and specifically try uh, targeting smallmouth or something like that. I'll probably pull this out and try it. Now the one last thing in here is a uh, looks like a catalog. They've never had this in here before that I've seen, not since I've been a subscriber. It's uh, Carl's catalog, slashing, darting, dashing, the hunch. Anyway, uh, Mystery Tackle Box just uh, kind of, they're expanding their catalog and have their own uh, tackle store now. And it doesn't have as many items in it as it's going to. They, they just recently just launched it. Um, and they, they got a club. It's uh, Carl's club. It's kind of like a Costco thing where you pay a, an annual fee and then you get a, a discount. I think it's 30% or I can't remember. I think they said 30% discount off of uh, the normal prices. So this in here looks like, I'm just looking through here. Yes, this is just a catalog of uh, some of their lures and stuff. And this is some of the stuff they sent before. Like I got this kit before. This is a Carolina rig kit. I've gotten this before from them. And uh, I've gotten these bio swan swim baits, bio spawn, excuse me, not swan, swim baits. But uh, this is cool. I haven't, I haven't seen this. You know, it's got apparel and stuff like that, which you can certainly find on their website, but it's Mystery Tackle Box, so go to mysterytacklebox.com if you'd like to sign up, and uh, I have no affiliation with them or anything like that, I can't get you a discount, I just started these, this channel, so I, I will have to get a hold of Mystery Tackle Box and see if I can get a coupon, coupon code to, for $10 off or some sort of a deal, free lure or whatever, for, uh, for people to watch the videos and subscribe to me, I don't have any subscribers yet, I just started this today, it's like my second video, uh, if you guys like this, please, thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, leave a comment. If you don't want me talking about cannabis or what I, you know, how I use cannabis when I'm fishing, which is some of the things I'll be doing in this series, please put a comment and let me know, um, or if you have concerns about the kids. And like I said earlier, it's not going to be an instructional video. I'm not going to be doing dabs. Um, you probably won't see me smoking cannabis at all. I mean, if you do, if I'm doing it, I'm going to do some fishing videos, and sometimes when I'm on the water, I will take a break and relax by using a little canvas. Um, that being the case, it wouldn't be a dab or a bong. Or I would just, you know, have a pre-roll joint or I'd eat a little piece of a cookie or take a capsule or something like that. So, you know, that could come up occasionally. If that's going to happen, I'll say at the beginning of the video, hey, if you don't want your kids to see this, you know, make sure they're not watching this. Yeah, this is just a way to, to talk to people about fishing and cannabis as they relate to each other because, let's face it, you guys know and I know, people go out, they drink, they smoke, they do a lot of things while they're on the water. I want to talk to you guys, make sure you're doing it smart, you don't get in trouble, and then again, uh, be real careful. I, I don't recommend taking uh, cannabis to state parks, federal parks, things like that. Be careful in states that don't have any legal cannabis, even on private bodies of water, because you could run afoul of the law. You guys know, I mean, I, certainly in California, most states that I'm aware of, and there, there could be exceptions, but most states require a fishing license, even if fishing on private bodies of water. It's like that in California. I can own my own pond, my own lake, but 
Fish and Game says I still got to have a state license, which means they can come on and check for licenses, even on private property. And if you get caught with cannabis in a state that doesn't have legal cannabis, or you're in a federal park or a state park, you might have a problem. So anyway, that's not the, the subject of these, this video or most of my videos. Most of them just going to be about fishing. So, you know, you don't have to worry too much about your kids being exposed to a bunch of nonsense. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for taking the time. Again, Mystery Tackle Box. This is really great. They have all kinds of contests and stuff you can do. You know, uh, catch, a, catch a fish with one of the baits and take a picture of it on here. Uh, post it. You might win a prize. Do a grand slam. Do a slam where you, you do a video of uh, catching a, a fish on each bait in the box. That you're eligible for prizes and stuff like that. And, uh, just a great way to get out on the water and have some fun. I'll do that on one of my next fishing trips. I'll take uh, lures specifically out of this box. I do this periodically. And I'll, I'll start videoing some of these since I, I just created this channel. I haven't done this in the past, but now that I got the channel, I will take uh, baits out of some of my past mystery tackle boxes. There's some that I haven't even used yet, you know. Um, you don't always get a chance to use them. You get busy or, you know, you're throwing this, you're throwing that. And uh, I am still building up tackle, although I've managed to build up quite a bit after the fires. Um, I'm still buying more fishing gear. Uh, and I'm going to keep this, this mystery tackle box as long as they're keeping me happy. Uh, which part of it's going to be send me a mystery tackle box sticker please i want one but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video please again subscribe comment thumbs up thumbs down if you don't like this video and you don't want me talking about cannabis because your kids and that sort of thing you know i i can appreciate i got kids you know i i raised my kids to not smoke cannabis boy i got really lucky um they actually listened you know uh, part of the problem was or i would say problem, part of the reason for that was i never i didn't do like most parents I didn't say, don't do this, don't do that, and then hide in my bedroom and do it. You know, I didn't say, don't smoke pot, don't do drugs. And they go sit in my bedroom hiding like the kids can't smell it or something. If, if you're a pot smoker and you're trying to hide it from your kids, I got news for you. Your kids know. I mean, unless they're three or four years old, they figured it out, okay? So you're really a lot better off being out. I always told my I never I never hid my, my cannabis use from my kids. I raised twins by myself from the time they were three weeks old because their mom didn't want them. No, seriously. She carried these twins for nine months, decided she didn't want them. So dad stepped up. I wasn't married. I didn't have a girl. My mom didn't help me. I did it all by myself. I raised two wonderful kids, Michael and Elizabeth. They're, they're, Michael's got an uh, eight-month-old daughter. I got a, a grandbaby now. They're both, they're both my kids live out of the house. They didn't smoke pot growing up. You know what I mean? They were around it, and I'm sure they tried it. You know, I thought because I owned a dispensary, maybe when they turned 18 years old, they'd say, hey, Dad, can I try some cannabis? They never did. And when I asked them about that, why, they said, well, you know, we, I, you know, I grew up around it. It was no big deal to me. And by the time I, I had friends that were smoking and wanted me to smoke, I didn't see, you know, what they, my dad does that. I don't want to do what my dad does. You know, teenagers don't want to do what their, their parents do, you know. Little kids do. Little kids want to grow up and be like their, like their mom or their dad. But teenagers, if, if you're doing something you think is cool, your kids don't think it's cool. So you, I don't know what kind of a service you think you're doing by hiding in the bedroom and telling your kids not to smoke weed and you're smoking it. The best thing to do is do like, I, in my opinion, it worked really well for me, was I was honest with my children. I told them, this is not for kids. This is why I use it. And I told them, this is illegal. You know, um, even before it was legal in California, I would tell them, this, it's illegal. I could go to jail for this. You know, this is why I use it. These are the lies about it. This is the truth. But it's not for kids. It's not for you. I don't want to catch you doing this. You know, and uh, that... It worked out really good. I was really, really lucky. My kids are not pot smokers. And again, it's not wrong if, if they want to. They're adults now, so it doesn't matter. It's up to them. They can do what they want to do. But as children, I wasn't going to allow it unless it was a medical thing. If there was a medical reason for it, absolutely. Never shy away from giving your child cannabis under the supervision and with uh, discretion of a physician. Now, the parents also need to make their decision, and you have to decide, too. Even if the doctor says you should do this and you don't feel like you should, then you shouldn't because you are ultimately the one that should be deciding what's best for your child. But uh, rest assured, there's nothing wrong with the child having it for medical purposes. You can get cannabis that doesn't get you high, although sometimes you need that kind to, to fix what it is you're trying to fix or to alleviate the symptom that you're trying to alleviate. And, uh, one last thing before I don't want to ramble too much. Cannabis is, is, is a miracle drug to a lot of people, but it doesn't fix everything, you know. It's probably easier to say what it doesn't help with than what it does help with because most people report that for just about everything, they get some sort of relief from it. I myself, I have back problems. I have sciatic nerve issues and I had back surgery several years ago. And I use it for controlling pain. When that sciatic nerve gets inflamed, there's a lot of pain. 
usually shoots down my legs because of where the nerve gets irritated. Uh, but everybody has different issues. Anyway, the point is, don't be afraid of cannabis under a doctor's supervision. Nobody's ever died from using cannabis. There's no negative, there's no long-term or short-term negative side effects other than you get a little hungry and you get a little thirsty. You know, it dehydrates you because it improves your circulation. Everything works better. That's one of the reasons you get thirsty. Drink a lot of water when you're, when you're smoking cannabis. And if you're eating cannabis, low doses, go slow. You can really freak yourself out on edibles if you don't have experience. So don't think because you've been smoking, you know, I've been smoking all my life, I've got a high tolerance. Smoking tolerance has no direct correlation to edible tolerance. I'm telling you right now, I've seen way too many people make the mistake. And every once in a while, I, I've overdone it myself. And the paranoia stuff starts to creep in. Again, you won't hurt yourself. Sometimes you might think you're dying. You're not, you're fine. You, you, you're full of anxiety. So anyway, it's responsible use, a low, slow, happy experience. And again, just leave comments. If you guys, you know, I'd like, I, I'm just starting a channel, I wanna get feedback on, do you guys want me even talking about cannabis and fishing and things like that? Because uh, it's gonna get more, there's gonna be more crossroads and it's getting more accepted. So I feel like somebody's gotta get out there and get ahead of the game and start doing it. I wanna be the guy to do it. So. A yes or a no, leave me a something in the comment. Please subscribe so that you know when I put up another video. I'm going to do real hard to be putting up uh, a couple of videos a week, if not more. So, uh, and before too long, some of them will be me out on the water doing some fishing in my little 12 foot aluminum boat that I just recently picked up. I was a, a shore fisherman most of my life, other than going out with friends and had a belly boat before the fires and all that. But I just picked up a 12 foot aluminum boat, got it from a duck hunter. That did some work to it, so there's a little storage, a place to stand, blah, blah, blah. Really excited. So anyway, peace out, you guys. I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.